You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, get out, Get the point. Good. And now... Fendom. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. And guess what? It is Friday. Actually, it's a Freaker Friday. Wee-hoo. And this is Grammy Mary, your hostess with the most is God knows what, but I got the most of something. I'm sure I do, because everybody's got the most of something. I haven't figured out mine yet, but... I am here on RealLibertyMedia.com, channel 10, also on the RLMRadio.xyz site, the RLM TuneIn radio station, RLM Spreaker channel, which, by the way, if you're listening in on Spreaker, just giving you a heads up, I have crap internet. And so, (laughs) I know my normal people know this already, but if you're listening on Spreaker and you want to chit-chat with me, I'm not able to keep that chat open while I'm broadcasting because it's entirely too many things going on, especially when I get a lot of links going and it crashes things. So come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Think of a nickname. Join the chat. Give me some static in there. I'll give it back. Everybody else will play along with you or they'll banter with you or maybe they'll jump on a bandwagon. There's been lots of bandwagons lately. One time at band camp. Yeah, that's pretty much the way things work around here. So, um, but yeah, lots of other places. And later to be on the RLM YouTube channel and the RLM BitChute channel. And I do believe even the RLM Real Video channel. So, hey, going to be all kind of places and it's kind of scary. It's kind of scary. Because people just kind of go, oh God, it's her again. (laughs) Yes, it is. I'm the one with the maniacal laugh just so so you know okay so let me get to saying hey there to everybody over here on twitterville thank you barman for tweeting me out i truly do appreciate it and good night jjs i hope you get some wonderful rest this evening um (laughs) what was that oh well thank you rob works yes rob works says i has the mostest heart of all in the RLM. Well, sweetheart, you know, sometimes that gets me in trouble. But, eh, you know, I would much rather have a great big heart and get into a little bit of trouble than to be a heartless crud and be in trouble. You know, it makes me feel a little bit better that way, at least. So, thanks, Rob Works. You're a sweetheart. And thanks for the bubbler, too. I'm getting a little bit of that cybernetic contact high going on. And let's hope that I don't yawn too awful much this show i know i did horribly on wednesday good god and considering the fact that i didn't sleep for doodly last night i have no idea why must have been something messing with the frequency of the earth or something but i didn't sleep at all well i can't say at all but i was up probably oh at least every hour i'd wake up and go shit really what the hell oh well Back to saying hey on Twitter. I did get, oh, oh, holy crap. I broke the 470 mark on stalkers over here on Twitter. Booyah, bonus round. Got a couple of them that have been quite, one actually, that I have been chitty chatting with. Um, Let me get her name real fast. Uh, Danny Lizzie. Hi, Danny Lizzie, and thank you ever so much for chitty chatting with me. That was lots of fun. Um... Let's see. And yeah, there's been an awful, 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 awful lot of Kavanaugh stuff. And you think I'm going to ignore it this time? No. I mean, I finally got, I got to the point where it's like, okay, okay. I just got to at least get a little spewage going on on this. But I'll do that here in just a bit. And yeah, Jeff Flake is a flake. But mm, that's just my personal opinion. Never really met the person. So... I guess I can express my opinion and it'd be just like everybody else's opinion. 
It's like assholes. Everybody's got one, and they all stink. Now, moving along and saying, hey, over here on realliberty.org, which is where you need to come on over and check things out. You don't have to worry about that silliness that uh, fake books got going on right now. What is it? Anywhere from 50 to 90 million? Or no. Is it really? Wait a minute. Let me... Let me scroll. Let me scroll. Got to scroll. I got something over here that Rob Works shared too that that I got to read. Um, let's see. Yeah, anywhere from 50 to 90 million user accounts have been affected by a security breach over on Facebook. If you listen to CNET or you check out CNET, CNET says up to 90 million. But most of the other places are just saying up to 50 million. So eh, either way, that's a boatload of people. That's a boatload. And uh, from what I've been seeing, hackers are saying they're going to delete Suckyberg's account. Aww. How's it feel, hon? You'll get to have your very own Facebook timeout. It's about time. I had one several years ago. And, I, you know, quite honestly, I've tried to get another one since then, and I just plain don't get them. I have no idea why not. I've been trying. Oh, well. Um, dun, dun. Oh, look, I'm sorry if Dr. Ford was actually sexually assaulted, but there is zero evidence to support she was assaulted by Brett Kavanaugh. Yeah, well, at least zero evidence that anybody is putting out in the media. I don't know if she was assaulted or not. I really don't. But... You know, something smells really, really, really bad about this whole deal. Really bad. And, you know, this shit of, of messing with people, you know, that's not cool. You know, this stuff of, of totally trash on someone's life, that is a form of theft, you know. And that is the only commandment this old broad's got, thou shalt not steal, which me covers all the bases. Don't steal someone's life. Don't steal, steal someone's security. Don't steal someone's um, name or um, honor. Don't steal someone's ability to make decisions for themselves. You know, everything comes down to thou shalt not steal. And that's what's going on here. There's some stealing going on. There's some highway robbery. Of course, it's been going on for quite some time. It's just, it's really pretty obvious now. But... Back to realliberty.org. I see barmans over here as well as Java Doctor, Grimner, and Rob Works, and yours truly. The lovely Mary B was on here for a little bit, uh, or not too long ago, I should say. And uh, let's see. Going, I'm going to move on over to Mines real quick. Thank you, Real Liberty Media, for sharing me over there on Mines. I reminded it as well. Um, and oh wow, a papal palace. Yeah, they've got some, they got some nice digs. You know, they keep saying that we should take care of the poor and the hungry and all that fun stuff. You got some nice digs there over there in the papal palace. Why don't you house some people? Hmm? Oh yeah, that's right. Do as I say, not as I do. That's what we hear from a lot of those eliches. You know, the leeches that be. I refuse to call them the elite or those that are in power, they may be pulling the strings right now, but they are the leeches, don't you know? The leeches that be. Uh, let's see. The ability to observe without evaluating is the highest form of intelligence. Well, <laughs> obviously, I'm not up there yet. Because <laughs> when I observe, I always got to put my two cents worth in. Okay, over here on Freedoms Network, once again, thank you, Grimner, for sharing it out, letting everybody know that I'm here. You the bomb. You the bomb. I also see the lovely Tessa has been over here, and Mujuter Souts, and Bob Renner, and yours truly. Um, let's see. Oh, and Reddit is now quarantining users who question 9-11. Well, you just go ahead and do that, hon. That sounds like a real fun thing to do. You know, every time someone tells me, don't go there, don't look at that, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm kind of spiteful like that. I'm kind of a child. Kind of a child. Also, one more. Hey, before I get to the big, hey there, hi there, ho there. Over here on Fakey Book. 
Hey there, everybody. How you doing? I don't know if my brother Fudd is listening in or not, but he did share something earlier and I had to reshare it because there is something very wrong with this picture. Did you know that in 2017, Americans paid on average $9,562 for food and clothing? And they also paid $16,749 in taxes. Doesn't that give you a warm, fuzzy feeling? I didn't think so. Doesn't do it for me. That's for damn sure. But yeah, that's from PragerU. For uh, PragerU.com, by the way, for those of you. Let me see if I can, if that link actually takes you to that. It would be cool if it did. Oh. Oh, it's a thing about lower taxes and higher revenue. Ah, well, cool. In any case, I'll just put that over in the RLM real quick. And speaking of the RLM, this is where you need to be, Real Liberty Media. Come on in and join the chat if you want to give me some static. Say hey to everybody else over here. Uh, Sock puppets still haven't found anything out. I will. I'll rattle some cages again. He's sometimes pretty bad about getting back to people. But I'm going to I'm going to assume since he hasn't really um you know made an effort to get back to me as in being able to sell some parts. Um I'm going to assume that those are not um separately serviceable parts anymore. Especially with it being in two thousand eight. That's ten years ago. Ten actually eleven now. Two thousand nineteens are out. So could be rather interesting. In any case, over here in the reallibertymedia.com chat, right up top, we got Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Grimner, who is the RLM god, don't you know? Also got the lovely Moose Girl here, and Grimner and Moose Girl are going to be on later on this evening for the Freaker's Ball, so be sure to check back or stick around if you want to. Um, that's always a good time had by all. I also see the lovely Kate is here, as well as Phantom. Mwah! Asmo is here, and the lovely Beth Z. We also got some Chloe going on, as well as Chalcedony. The lovely Cycles from Denmark is here, and another Chloe going on, double dipping going on. Colfax 101, and the Flying Spaghetti Monsters extension, the Cyborg Noodle. Yeah, be a Borg. <laughs> May you be touched by his noodly goodness on this Freaker Friday, which happens to be a Pastafarian Holy Day. Every Friday is a Pastafarian Holy Day. So, why don't you imbibe in some of their holy beverage? Beer. I know. Beer. Yeah. That equates with all kinds of things, according to the demon craps lately. Moving along. Hi, D underscore C. I also see Dakota and Frumpt. Because he just can't have the Y in there. He doesn't feel like asking questions. He's got to be all T. And I'm here as well as Gromit. I be Don C. Java, 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 Doctor 2. JJ's. No, 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 JJ's. Although I do believe he is gone. Betty bye. Uh, Juana Taco. Guess what? I had that uh, Wednesday night. Went out for supper and I had a great big old honking taco salad. And mm -mm -mm, was it ever good. I also see a double dip in a Kozu going on as well as Layer 8 is in the chat. Meister Brower. Hi, Woody. How you doing, hon? Moy, 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 moy is also here as well as a quadruple pox in the chat box. Because we got pox box and poxified, poxophone and pox of home. Pompa, pompa, pon sauce is here as well as a lovely rain. RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel is also here as well as Rob Works who fired up that bubbler just because he cares. That's the only thing he cares about. But hey. <laughs> oh no. There's there's other things he cares about. But you know. Because everybody. You know when you talk about government. They all suck. Which okay. I got to admit. He's right. <clears throat> Moving along. <laughs> hey Rome's. Where's the. Darth Rome's. We need to have a Darth Rome's. Because you know things have been getting rather dark. And actually it's dark out here. Because. It's cold and cloudy and windy and yeah. I had all kinds of plans for playing out in the yard until it got cold and cloudy and windy. And then I went, mm, 
I'll do stuff inside today. Wimp. Looky there, sock puppet. Hi, sock. How you doing? We also got the F Bominator Skittle in the chat. And, and to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Vinny can. If anyone can, Vinny can. Um, does that come with fembots? I have no idea if it comes with fembots, but I did see something about someone is going to be opening up a uh, robot's brothel. Uh, or a sex bot brothel. Oh, Lord. Can you say hand basket? And from the temperatures out here, I think hell's freezing over. Yeah. Seriously, peeps. It's not bad enough that you got to go wank yourself all the time, but now you got to have a freaking bot to, because wanking yourself just ain't cutting it anymore, so you got to have some kind of bot that'll do it for you. Because that whole human interaction thing, that just ain't working for you anymore. You're so busy looking at a freaking screen, I say, as I look at a screen. <laughs> Oi. Goober. Hi, Goober. Gooberzilla just popped in, too. Yay. Goober. Okay, now I am going to get to some of this uh, crazy ass Kavanaugh shit. Because it is crazy ass. It's like, really? Um, okay, well, hmm. Uh, police officer shot in leg kills suspect. Oh, wow. Damn. I just refreshed Twitter and damn, that's just gross. Okay, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and close Twitter down just because I've, I've had enough, enough Twitter for one day. So, although I did swipe this from Twitter, this is from scotusblog.com. With Kavanaugh hearing set, Senate releases records. So, although the battle over records related to Judge Brett Kavanaugh's tenure in George W. Bush's White House continues, the Senate Judiciary Committee has recently released over 100,000 pages of documents. Isn't it funny how they dump, of course, this was um, August 14th of this year, by the way. I needed a sip of coffee. So, they've, I'm sure they've had time to peruse at least... Oh, at least 10,000 of those pages. But <clears throat> the first batch of documents released in August contained over 5,000 pages of emails from Kavanaugh's stint as an associate Washington or White House counsel, a position in which he served from January 2001 until, Jan until uh, 2003 and hundreds if not thousands of pages from the initial batch of the documents are completely non-substantive made up of for example email headers from mass emails and computerized legal alerts to which Kavanaugh subscribed excuse me many other emails were somewhat cryptic giving the distinct impression that staffers were trying to avoid getting into too much substantive discussion over email which I think is actually a wise decision because hackers and all, you know, them damn Russians, they do it all the time because they're Russians and they can't help themselves because they're in a rush, apparently. Now, there were some emails that also provided a detailed look into the operation of the White House Counsel's Office, including the extent to which the lawyer's work is often enmeshed with politics. <coughs> Excuse me, I swallowed wrong. And the emails are likely to provide fodder for members of the Senate Judiciary Committee to question Kavanaugh about his role in the Bush administration's war on terror when the confirmation hearing begins in early September. Well, it's already begun and it is dragged on and dragged on and dragged on. And... That's about as far as I want to go with this one, because you guys, if you want to read it anymore, it's it's just not catching my... I saw the thing, and it was like, ah, SCOTUS blog, Kavanaugh hearing. Let's check this shit out. Yeah, it's just not doing it for me. Sorry. What is that? Pablo's cheese bud? Good God. How many freaking flavors of, of, of Mechihuana bud? does one have to have 
Seriously. Okay, I'm going to put this over here on realliberty.org, but first I'm going to read what Rob Work shared a couple hours ago. This is when government does it and when anybody else does it. So when government does something, it's called enhanced interrogation, but when anyone else does it, it's called torture. With government, it's no-knock raids, whereas anybody else, it's breaking and entering. When government does it, it's taxation. Anybody else, it's armed robbery or extortion, however you want to look at it. Government, it's called arrest. Anybody else? Kidnapping. Government, indefinite detention. Anybody else? Holding hostages. Kidnapping. That kind of stuff. When government does it, education. Anybody else does it, it's indoctrination. Basically, when government does it, it's actually in educraption. But that's mincing words. When government does it, it's making a campaign promise. When anyone else does it, you're a liar, liar, pants on fire. When the government does it, it's called campaign contributions. But when anyone else does it, it is called bribery. When the government does it, it's defense operation. Whereas when anyone else does it, it's called aggression. When the government does it, it's a military occupation. And when anyone else does it, it's called land theft. When the government does it, it's a security pat-down. Anybody else? It's a sexual assault. Mm. I don't recall Kavanaugh ever having on his resume that he worked for the TSA. Just saying. When the government does it, national security. Because, yeah, national security is such a great big umbrella that covers so many things. When anybody else does it, it's called spying on neighbors. Peeping Toms. Someone that you could shoot in the face. When the government does it, peacekeeping mission. When anyone else does it, invasion, peacekeeping. <laughs> yeah, right. When the government does it, it's war, which is basically what a peacekeeping mission is. And when anyone else does it, it is mass murder. Yes. Isn't it funny how when you get to make the rules, you get to change the way things are played. Thanks, guys. Yeah, it's okay when you do it. We're playing canasta government style Hi. okay I just did ug on that because it's like really it's kind of dry and yes what hmm spit spit no it wasn't one of it wasn't one of them Vinny can it was just I, I swallowed my coffee wrong <laughs> <laughs> you guys are naughty. I love it. I am not going to comment on Grimmy's comment or Moosey's. <laughs> I'll just let your imaginations run wild with that. If you're not in the RLM chat, you just lost out. So, okay, I'm going to go back over here to my pocket because I do have some really... This one is um, HermanCain.com shared this one. And I kind of sort of started reading it. And then I went, ah, ah, I better save this for the radio. So thank you, Herman Cain. This was, I'm, I don't remember where it was originally posted. I'll have to scroll and find out, won't I? So uh, Liberal Brain Trust says, how dare Brett Kavanaugh get so angry about these baseless rape accusations? Remember when Herman Cain was running for POTUS? Remember that way back when? I actually was really wanting to vote for Herman Cain. I was really hoping he would get the Republican nomination because then they wouldn't be able to throw out the race card. You know? I was really, really looking forward to that, thinking that maybe this was going to be a rather interesting run. But guess what happened? Baseless sexual allegations started flying right and left. And Herman Cain dropped out simply because it wasn't worth the shit his family was going to have to go through. I understand that. I get that. Slur and smear and sling some mud and some other stuff that smells really bad but is remotely the same cl color as mud. Now, <clears throat> this is by Robert Lawry, by the way. I would imagine that if you're an innocent man accused of running a gang rape ring, you'd be a little bit peeved. 
If the people accusing you dragged you onto national television and demanded that you beg to be the subject of an FBI investigation, you'd be more likely or you'd be more than likely to get angry. If those same people ignored the fact that there's not a shred of evidence that you'd ever done anything wrong and proceeded to destroy your name, your family, and your career in the most egregious act of character assassination the country has ever seen, well, you'd be goddamn furious, which I don't know that it's the most egregious act of character assassination. You know, that's, that's, you know, every time you say that, they take that as a challenge and they have to set the bar just a skosh higher. It's kind of like, how stupid can you be? You, people take that as a challenge. I know some of those people and I really don't want to challenge them. Um, what? Oh, the Ford Kavanaugh is toast now. <laughs> Thank you, Gooberzilla. Yeah, and she's, you know, not, I'll bet she's getting raked through the, yeah. Her life is going to be shit after this as well. But there's going to be lots of people making political brownie points. Or at least they're going to have brown marks beside their name. However you want to look at that. In any case, to continue with this, I'll be completely honest. I was furious watching the hearings yesterday. I have no idea how Brett Kavanaugh was able to keep his cool as well as he did. It's something I doubt I would have been able to do. More than likely, I would have hit the trash that is Diane Feinstein and Dick Durbin with some obscene hand gesture and some choice expletives. You know, I probably would have too if that kind of crap was being slung at me. Yeah, I know, Goober. It is all a distraction. But you know what? I did see something earlier today that tied up this distraction with the Oh, and I've seen that Michael Savage and the Christine Ford thing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> in any case, this is tying in quite nicely with the Russian distraction because now there's people out there saying that Lindsey Graham is being blackmailed by Russia to do what he's doing. It's like, really? It's them freaking Rushkis again. God dang, they're busy little bees, don't you know? Or there's an awful lot of really, really paranoid people out there that really need to get some therapy because they're obsessing over the Russians so much. One of the two, or maybe somewhere in that gray area in between. God only knows. I'm just happy I'm not them. To move along. Yes, I know. That's exactly what they want. The hand gestures and the expletives. You'd be playing right into their hands. Still... I doubt I would have gotten through that hearing with even a tenth of the cons composure that the nominee displayed. Now, Ka Kavanaugh's rage is 100% justified. The demon craps on the Judiciary Committee and his accusers know full well they have nothing, nothing at all, of substance. They don't care. They are completely and totally willing to... Um, decimate an innocent man if it means furthering their agenda. Yes, the agenda. Oh, the almighty agenda. Ami, 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 ama to the agenda. Yeah, despite the fact that his anger is completely understandable, progressives have adopted a new talking point today because Kavanaugh's demeanor supposedly speaks of him being a violent drunk and out-of-control Irish Catholic alcoholic who's ready to attack at the slightest provocation. A man like that, they claim, should be nowhere near our government, let alone the highest court in the land. You know, I don't like the government, period. But what's going on right now really is despicable. It really is. You got to stop. Look at it. Seriously. Take your freaking ideology blinders off for a minute. Would you like to have this kind of shit tossed in your direction or towards a family member of yours? It is beyond disgusting. Beyond disgusting. So how dare Brett Kavanaugh not shut up and agree to those who are baselessly accusing him of being a serial rapist? Well... 
<coughs> excuse me, sorry lefties, we've learned our lesson. Brett Kavanaugh's anger, his righteous indignation, and his refusal to go along with your disgusting, craven assault isn't something for which we're going to fault him. Along with, I might add, personally, this whole stuff of poking fun at him because he stayed a virgin longer than you, or because he admitted that he liked beer, somehow you guys equated that with, he likes beer, that means he's a rapist. Really? I've had a couple of beers or two, and I don't recall ever doing that to someone else. Seriously. <sighs> back to the article. We like that he's willing to fight back. It's good that he's not going to wander away with his tail between his legs. Republicans confirm this man immediately. This is what you're fighting, which I don't know that I think they need to jump on that, confirm him immediately, because possibly this could all be part of the play acting thing going on. We're going to totally trash this guy on national and international news so that you guys can rush to confirm him so that somewhere down the line we can bring out something else that actually has some substantive value to it and then we can make you feel bad and then you can backpedal and then and then and then yeah but wait there's more the show goes on apparently though this lovely little tweet from Lawrence Tribe the rage Judge Kavanaugh displayed, apart from its bearing on his judicial temperament, exposed the dark side of a guy who seemed fully capable of getting sloshed, doing exactly what Dr. Ford described him, laughing as he did, and barely remembering the next day what he had done. Wow, Lawrence, were you there? Were you at any of those parties? That she couldn't remember exactly what party it was or what year it happened or where it was or who she was with. But she knows that Kavanaugh was the one that did it 35 years later. You know, I have a pair of memory soul shoes. And, you know, I thought maybe, oh, this is awesome. I have some shoes with memory insoles. So next time I walk into the kitchen, I'll remember what the hell I went in there for. But... <laughs> Sadly enough, it doesn't work that way. Selective memory. How about Jane Gregg, who said that Kavanaugh is an Irish Catholic with a drinking problem. I know his type. I grew up with people just like him. I know your type too, hon. Huh? Judgmental. Rushing to conclusions. Standing by your be-lifes. Yes... I'm sounding staunchly right, sweetheart. Chloe, I, I, I have a tendency to get my hackles up when I see a monkey pile like this. It's disgusting. It is disgusting. And you know what? The worst part about all of this, speaking as someone who has actually been through that whole process you know, of going to court and everything because someone broke into the trailer house that I lived in. And yes, I can tell you details. I remember looking at the clock, seeing the time was 1.50 in the morning. I remember things like that from 40 fucking years ago. F-bomb right off the bat. And you know what? To not be able to remember where you were, who you were with, when it happened, Sorry, either you got a major blockage going on, at which mm, I got issues with that one, or you're, you're lying. Either way, it's a fucking monkey pile, a jumping on a bandwagon that really pisses me off. Really. And the worst thing about it is that now... It's going to be a cry wolf thing. So the next time someone does step forward and they actually have evidence, you know, like a rape kit or anything like that, you know what's going to happen? Everybody's going to go, oh, yeah, right. Like that Dr. Christine Ford. Yeah, 
That's a, what she got to gain from this shit. That's what's the worst part about this. That's the worst part. And that's what really pisses me off. Speaking as someone who's been through that. It's bullshit. It is total bullshit to belittle that so much as to use it for a political power play. It's bullshit. And there's a lot of women out there that are now not going to come forward just because this is bullshit. Just because of all of this crap. This fucking media circus. It's bad enough when you have to go through it all. And when you have to sit there in court and you have to listen to the, you have to actually respond to a defense attorney who calls you every fucking name in the book. Yeah, loads of fun, let me tell you. Been there, done that, sucks big time. I also lived through it. I also counseled an awful lot of people that were there, went through it, and helped them. And it helped me too. It was cathartic. And this is also cathartic because it's like, fuck you guys. I understand that, Gooberzilla. I understand that it's CIA sponsored. But every great lie has a kernel of truth. And they are taking something that is very, very disgusting, very vile, very power playish, And they are using it as a tool in order to manipulate the way people see things. And it is a cry wolf thing. It is. It's going to get to the point where people are just going to dismiss it. And that's wrong. That's wrong. Okay, carry on with this. Mm. Yeah, they go on about his demeanor and his rage and yada, 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 blah, 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 unhinged, angry, unrestrained, tweet after tweet after tweet after tweet, calling him out on all kinds of shit. Maybe he's not the nicest guy in the world. From some of the stuff I've read, eh, he was involved in the Patriot Act. That puts him pretty low on the totem pole for me. But still, it doesn't make it any more right to do what they're doing. It really does. And to rake his family over the coals like this as well. It's bullshit. It is total bullshit. And the fact that they are using rape as a political ploy. That's bullshit. Pisses me off. To no end. Ah... <sighs> And yes, Chloe, it is a memory that lasts, but you don't have to be a victim of it. I don't know what she's been through something, but I have no idea what. Hell, it could be freaking mind con CIA mind control shit for all I know. And she's going to go through hell for the rest of her life because she's always going to be. You know, that's going to follow her. And that's sad. It is sad. All because people want to play this little power play shit. Pisses me off to no end. Like assholios. <sighs> okay, I'm just going to grr. I'm, I need to move along. Because <laughs> this mm, just want to say I've been there I know I understand it's not fun so um, actually just to go along with Gooberzilla and then I got another one um, that I want to get to right after this this is um from September 23rd from the uncensored truth dot net the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth uncensored well we'll see you know there really is only the truth there's not my truth there's not your truth there are things that we believe as truisms but you got that word believe in there and that has lie in the middle of it so don't ever get caught up in your beliefs 
you know, because when you get caught up in them, it's like tripping over your shoelaces. You're going to face plant into a pile of something that may not be pleasant. Myself included, I've done that face plant a time or two. It's not fun. And eating crow ain't fun either. But I've done that a time or two as well. Now, back to this article. The Distraction That Is the Kavanaugh Confirmation Hearings by Michael Jacobson. Now, I'm sure you have heard, either through the TV or social media, the controversy regarding nominating Brett Kavanaugh as Supreme Court Justice and the media fervor of the, over the allegations that he may or may not have groped a girl at a high school party seemed to fill the total of the reasons not to approve him as a Supreme Court judge. Yes, I see some. I know, Chloe, I know I'm not the only one. I know. Uh, do what? Okay, back to, so not one in any media article or program has a question been, or not once, I should, well, no, it says one, uh, has a question been raised about the voting records of this judge since this media-inspired controversy has broken out. Almost like this is not supposed to be an actual qualifying reason to decide whether to nominate him or not. Now, Supreme Court judges are supposed to be nominated based on their past rulings and their adherence to the Constitution or lack thereof. So why has the media and almost all politicians gone out of their way to distract us from that? Well, the main reason that I can figure is that Kavanaugh will not really rock the boat one way or another. He's in favor of violating the Fourth Amendment, which means programs like spying on American citizens will be perfectly all right by him. Exactly what the establishment wants. After all, if our government cannot spy on its own citizens, how is it supposed to keep control over you? The notion that Kavanaugh would vote to overturn Roe v. Wade is also overblown. In a case where he could have stopped an abortion, he instead ruled in favor of the woman's rights to an abortion. However, the media will only tell you he probably would have blocked her abortion. This is a half-hearted lie at best. Now, previously, Republican Senator Rand Paul had expressed concerns about nominating Kavanaugh to the empty seat. However, he has since reversed his objection and now supports his appointment. So while the reasons for this switch in stance are unknown, it is a good bet that for some form of deal was made to secure Paul's vote. And if Paul had intended to go along with the vote in the first place, he would not have stated public opposition. Aside from that, there's really nothing of note that stands out in the decisions that Kavanaugh has made. He pretty much seems like if he's confirmed, he will just be keeping the status quo of allowing government to expand with no real limit. And this is what the people in control of our country want. They keep you distracted from the idea that we are allowing another person who will expand government control over its citizens to become a Supreme Court justice. Yes... Now, the major issue is how Congress and the media have made this nomination into a question about a 35-year-old attempted rape case centered around the accusations of a person when they were 17. First off, when did we hold juvenile crimes against a person for life, and why are we treating a person as if he is guilty before being proven innocent? It's a little bass backwards, but that's kind of the way the system has been for a while now. So what this is doing is conditioning people to not bother waiting for a trial and trusting the media to provide us with all the information that we need. In essence, we're allowing the media to do the thinking for us while we respond like emotional children. <gasps> but I want, I'm off-ended. This author has detailed the way the media manipulates our emotions in another article that has a link here. Now, we're not supposed to think about the timing of the release 
of a letter that was in a senator's hands for over two months. We're not supposed to question that, nor are we supposed to notice that this matter could have been investigated during those two months. We're not supposed to question that it really does seem like this was deliberately timed and really is only being used to delay the no nomination, not for any reason or not for any interest in these accusations. Also worthy of note is that if you check various GoFundMe drives right now, Hundreds of thousands of dollars have been raised for the accuser, Dr. Christine Ford. And that is quite an, a, a payout for someone who is making claims that are 36 years old. And by the way, last I saw on Twitter, that's reaching the $900,000 mark. Last I saw on GoFundMe things that were posted to Twitter. And it wasn't just, oh, this is the total. They were posting the link to the page just so as you know. So this is ju just a start of that money as there will be quite a few more days to raise more cash. Possibly why the date for her testimony keeps getting pushed back. But major media outlets will not mention something like this to you. The facts that when you look at the timing and accusations, you realize that this is nothing more than a stunt to keep people ignorant of Kavanaugh's judicial history and a bit of theatrics to keep people thinking that demon craps and rebloodlicans do not serve basically the same agenda. The rebloodlicans could have put this issue to a vote, but they allowed it to be dragged out in an act of political theater a theater meant to distract you from the truth. And that, my friends, is the uncensored truth. So, you want to know what's going on? That's pretty much what's going on. Um... Uh, predictions? Ooh. Yeah, how are the predictions doing? Um, I'm wondering how many people got something right. <laughs> I know I didn't, but, you know, what the hell. My name ain't Swami. Okay. Bam. Now, now that I have done that, now that I've gotten that out of my system, okay, it's not completely out of my system, but I've, I've, yeah, <sighs> gotten that far. Cranky, 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 cranky. I'm going to go back to my pocket because I have something else that, you know, at least with the headline, I agree. This is from worldtruth.tv. I found a few things on worldtruth.tv that I rather liked today. This one is, Congressman proposes legislation to force all elected officials to be drug tested. <laughs> I would almost be willing, almost, almost be willing to volunteer to collect the samples. Almost. Oh, no. Wait a minute. I take that back. Ew, can't go there. In any case, <clears throat> Louisiana Congr Congressman Representative Clay Higgins, who is a rebloodlican from Louisiana, wants to force every single member of Congress to take regular d drug tests, and he wants them to pay for the tests themselves. You know, unlike the taxpayers being on the uh, tab for all of the uh, sexual harassment claims that have been settled that were against con con or Congress members and s members of the Senate, that's a lovely little thing too, isn't it? Kind of the, oh, here we go. It's going to be a race. I'm going to get race bait and shit now. Pot calling the kettle black, don't you know? Now, Higgins has apparently introduced the legislation... 
uh, which, if passed, will force all federal lawmakers to be randomly drug tested once per term for illegal drug use. Now, according to the legislation titled Random Drug Testing for Members of the House of Representatives and the Senate, A, in general, each member of the House of Representatives and the Senate shall participate in accordance with this con concurrent resolution in a program for testing for illegal use of controlled substances. B, features the program... Um, under this concurrent resolution shall include the following features. Number one, each member of the House of Representatives and Senate shall be subject to a random drug test once per term of such member. I think it needs to be one, at least once per year, not per term. Number two, each confirmed positive result under the program shall be provided as follows. To the member involved, um, in the case of a member of the House of Representatives to the Committee on Ethics of the House of Representatives for such review as may be necessary under the rules of House of Representatives, uh, in the case of members of the Senate to the Sen Select Committee on Ethics of the Senate for which for such review as may be necessary under their standing rules in the Senate. Higgins said that he introduced the legislation to treat members of Congress like regular working class citizens who Higgins thinks are drug tested on a regular basis. Therefore, I think, why just once per term? If it's a random drug testing, minimum of once a year. Now, elected officials in Washington, D.C. should be subject to the same kind of random drug screenings that blue-collar, working-class Americans have to endure. Congress shouldn't get to live by a different set of rules. This effort is about maintaining accountability and ensuring sober service to we the people, said Higgins in a statement. Now, for those who don't remember, Clay Higgins, as Reason Magazine points out, is the same guy who last July recorded a video of himself inside a former gas chamber in the Auschwitz concentration camp. Higgins was roundly criticized at the time, not just by the usual outrage mob, but also by the Auschwitz Memorial uh, Twitter account. Higgins' offense wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it was widely seen as disrespectful and just plain dumb, especially considering that a stone engraved near the entrance to the gas chamber asked visitors to remain silent. Now, I'm wondering, considering the gas that they supposedly used and the concrete walls, did that not permeate the walls? Is there still not traces of that in the walls? Could you not get sick going inside those buildings? Just pondering as a side note. Now, when questioned, to carry on with this, when questioned whether or not this drug test uh, legislation was some political stunt, Higgins insisted that he is serious. This isn't a stunt, he told the Monroe's, uh, Monroe News Star. It's not about shaming or embarrassing or ending members' careers. It's about our body adhering to the same standards most every other working man and woman is held to on the job. But Higgins is way off here. Every member of the American workforce is not subject to drug tests, thankfully. So while many jobs do require random drug tests, the overwhelming majority of jobs do not. So while Washington is certainly full of criminal politicians, the idea that drug testing them is going to fix anything is pretty silly. Yeah, it is kind of silly, and yet, that sort of Damocles, that would be funny to see them go, oh crap, they drew my name. I gotta find somebody to piss in a jar for me. In fact, Many of them would probably do well to start using drugs like marijuana. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Now, if members of Congress frequently engaged in smoking pot, perhaps they'd overturn the laws which require cops to lock people up for it. And if more members of Congress smoked weed, perhaps we'd be less apt to drone bombing children in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Yemen. Perhaps Higgins should force Congress to take drug tests and perhaps 
they should have to at least have one cannabis positive per year. Perhaps. That was via the Free Thought Project. I like that. Perhaps. Perhaps. And yet, I think the drug testing would be fun. It would be giggles and shits and shits and giggles. Um, there you go, Grim. They should be required to smoke pot every day. And I actually do had ponder, ponder, Vinny. I know I did say ponder, didn't I? Um, I think I do have something in my pocket about um, that whole. Here we go. Um, and it's it's actually from something that I saw over on Fakey Book. Um, from my, the Essential Oils University page over there, uh, Dr. Pappas shared it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share this other one over here on realliberty.org real quick. Okay. There, we'll do that one. Um, so, oop. This is from hempindustrydaily.com. And this, it was published yesterday. DEA takes some CBD off Schedule 1 with FDA approval. With FDA approval. And this story's been updated to provide additional details from the DEA announcement. So, it was posted, but let's get on with it. The U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration has taken some cannabinoidal off of the most restricted class of controlled substances, a move that allows the sale of the first non-synthetic non cannabis-derived medicine to win federal approval. Now, uh, I am going to have to check real quick because I got to go to, where's that at? Over here on my fakey book. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Keep that cursor rolling. There it is. Because I will read you Dr. Pappas' comment as soon as I'm done with this. So, the agency announced Thursday that drugs including finished dosage formulations of CBD with THC below 0.1% will be considered Schedule 5 drugs as long as the medications have been approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. So it's the first time the agency has removed any type of cannabis from Schedule 1. The action came three months after the FDA approved Epidiolex, Epidiolex, which is a CBD preparation for rare types of epilepsy that is made from cannabis grown in the United Kingdom. Now, if the DEA had not taken this step, doctors would not have been able to prescribe the medication because Schedule 1 drugs cannot be prescribed. This rule is why physicians in states with medical marijuana laws recommend the plant but can't prescribe it. Now the change also means that a epidiolex or a CBD preparation, okay, wait a minute, okay, it will be distributed through traditional pharmaceutical channels. So Big Pharma still got their fingers in the till and from the doctor's prescription to a drugstore instead of through the marijuana dispensary or designated marijuana caregiver. Now the rescheduling affects more than Epidiolex and here are the details from the announcement. The DEA said the new scheduling applies to FDA approved drugs that contain CBD derived from cannabis and no more than 0.1% tetrahydrocannabinoidals. So, tetrahydrocannabinoidals, however you pronounce that. 
So even though the epidiolex is the only formulation that currently meets the definition, the change could eventually affect other CBD formulations. Also, it is still not legal to make CBD in the U.S. The DEA said that the bulk cannabis material used to make this formulation, as opposed to the FDA-approved drug product in finished dosage form, will remain in Schedule 1. Why? Because it's cutting into the profit margin of big pharma and over-the-counter and all kind of... There's, you know, when you start digging into it and you see all the different tentacles or all the little leeches that are sucking off of you and me. Yeah, we got an awful lot of feeders out there. No wonder people are getting tired of this crap. Now, a Schedule 5 drug is still illegal without a prescription. And the DEA says Schedule 5 drugs have a low potential for abuse and are generally pain relievers and anti-diarrhea medications. Other Schedule 5 drugs include Lyrica and prescription strength Robitussin with codeine. Now, cannabis entrepreneurs cheered the new classification even though it currently applies to only one drug for rare diseases and has a price tag that may limit the market. The London-based GW Pharmaceuticals, manufacturer of Epidiolex, has said it will charge, wait for it, $32,500 a year for the treatment. That's in line with other medications for um, interactable epilepsy. $35,500 a year. That's more than I made when I was still working outside the house. Bullshit. Now, as a result, many patients likely will wait to see if insurance covers the drug, which is a decision usually driven by another federal agency, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. In other words, another alphabet soup agency, and I think we really do need to flush every damn one of them, except it would totally taint the water supply of the whole world. Can you imagine the sewage from that? Now, the agency determines what is included for recipients of federal health benefits. Now, here are the market opportunities and risks. The most intriguing potential for investors from the rescheduling is called off-label use. Physicians prescribing a drug for other conditions besides the one for which the drug manufacturer ran trials. Epidiolex's market opportunity may be much broader if doctors prescribe it to patients with other types of epilepsy under this standard. And the scheduling change also could make it easier for medical researchers to look at CBD applications beyond epilepsy treatment. But that also takes a lot of cha-ching. So continuing to study the benefits of CBD would increase the number of practical uses for the compound. That's from Michael Ber uh, Brubeck, who is CEO of Centuria Natural Foods. He also noted that several other CBD medications are in the pipeline for FDA consideration and that Epidiolex is paving the way for more cannabinoids following the same regulatory channel to market. In other words, jump through our flaming hoops. It's going to cost you a lot, but let me tell you, it's going to be so worth it to us because we're going to charge you $32,500 a year. Bet you sweet bippy on that. Now, the FDA said Thursday that it would approve progress or that the approval process won't change for other can cannabis medications based on the CBD rescheduling. In other words, you're fucked. Yeah, or as this article says, in other words, things won't necessarily get easier for other companies proposing FDA-approved cannabis medicines. Why? Because it cuts into big pharma. And Big Pharma is just too lucrative of a partner for the FDA to just totally shit on them. Now, shares of GW Pharmaceuticals, which trades on the NASDAQ as GWPH, closed at $174.50 Thursday. That's an increase of almost 7% and a record high for a cannabis stock on any exchange. 
Rescheduling brings some risks for other CBD manufacturers and retailers, though. GW Pharmaceuticals has repeatedly said it has no objection to other companies making CBD, but many in the cannabis industry fear the company and the U.S. Food and Drug Administration may try to block other formulations of the extract. Acetaminophen, for example, is perfectly legal over the counter, but it's not legal to make at home and then sell. A few states, including South Dakota, have laws on the books that favor CBD products with FDA approval. And it could uh, really be a burden to the medical sector if the FDA becomes involved. This is from James Minutello, who is CEO of Leaf Logics, a Greendale, California company that makes business management software for the cannabis industry. Still, the rescheduling is a long-awaited improvement, he said. We're one step closer to finally ending prohibition and legitimizing the industry. No, we're not. They're just dangling a freaking carrot and they're giving you a feel-good notion. Period. Now, <clears throat> as for Dr. Pappas's, um comment, <clears throat> excuse me, comments on this. As many feared, CBD has been removed from Schedule 1, a good thing, but they made it a Schedule 5. So you have to have a prescription for it, at least according to federal law. Now, all this for a component with no psychoactive effects, non-addicting, not harmful in any way, and completely natural. Big pharma and big government teaming up for more crony capitalism for control and profit from something that can help so many people. Advil is literally more dangerous than CBD. But when you have the trifecta of big industry, which is big pharma, big alcohol, and big tobacco, all working hard to buy off politicians to stop anything related to cannabis from becoming legal, this is the kind of result you get. When will people wake up? That's a good question. When will people wake up? Dr. Pappas, by the way, is one of the leading um, chemists when it comes to testing essential oils for quality and for, um, um, oh, I can't think of the wording of it now. Um, checking to see if it's got, you know, any kind of fillers in it. And he's really big on calling out those that sell as pure essential oil when it's got a shitload of fake synthetic or fillers in it. He, he do not like fillers. It degrades the essential oil community because it may, it's another one of those cry wolf things. It makes people think, ah, well, that one's a sham. They all must be. So thank you, Dr. Pappas, for everything that you do. Now, I'm going to put this over on realliberty.org as well. I think the FDA needs to just get completely out of it. I, I think the government just flat ass needs to get completely out of it. And, you know, uh, this whole prohibition shit... It's like, you know what's best for us? Really? I'm going to take that as, I'm going to read that as, you know what's best for you to continue making your money and controlling what I am allowed to do or to intake myself. If I'm not hurting anyone else, it's none of your damn business. Okay. So, yeah, I'm I'm crankle poo this evening. Good God. This whole Kavanaugh shit just I need to stop it. So uh 
dun 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 dun. Let's see. Now that now that we have talked about prohibition and cannabis and all this other fun stuff, this is another one I found over on WorldTruth.tv, and it's actually from April uh, April of this year. Have me a sip of coffee while that's loading. Study finds that alcohol is worse for mental health than psychedelics. You think? A study by the Research Council of Norway has concluded that psychedelics do not link to mental health problems or suicidal behavior. It's a, it's a study of roughly 130,000 adult citizens in the United States found no evidence that psychedelic use is an independent risk factor for mental health problems. Now, of the 135,095 randomly selected people, 19,299 of them had used either lysergic acid, yeah, that, yeah, LSD, yeah, or psilocybin, or mescaline, and no links were found to increase likelihood of past year serious psychological distress, mental health treatment, suicidal thoughts, suicidal plans, and suicide attempt, depression, and anxiety. The ov overall, the study concluded it is difficult to see how prohibition of psychedelics can be justified as a public health measure. There is no justification. That's why they have it under that whole umbrella of public health. Because you can't play because the public. Now, as information is allowed to run free through the Internet, it has become openly apparent that many psychedelic drugs are not the danger the profit-driven media had portrayed them to be. Often, they are one of the greatest medicines to overcome addiction. There is, however, a direct link between alcohol abuse and suicide. According to the U.S. National Library of Medicine, alcohol abuse may lead to suicidality through disinhibition, impulsiveness, and impaired judgment. But it may also be used as a means to ease the distress associated with committing an act of suicide. Renowned author... Sam Harris discusses the virtues of some of the specific psychedelic drugs in a um, video that's linked to this or attached to this, and you may want to give that a listen. Now, I will admit, back in my day, when I was a lot younger, I did imbibe in some LSD. I have not imbibed in a while a long while, like years and years and years and years. But, I tell you what, I never woke up the next morning feeling like as, feeling as crappy as I did when I overindulged with alcohol. Which is why I pretty much stay away from alcohol as well. Um, alcohol just, it just plain don't do it for me anymore. Every once in a while. If I've been busting my ass out in the yard, a nice ice cold beer sounds good. I prefer a red beer, but cold beer sounds good every once in a while. Every once in a while. A hot toddy sounds good, but for the most part, mm, the alcohol in my house is used to make cleaners. Because <laughs> I basically have vodka. And I use that to make Febreze and cleaners and help with my essential oil breakdown so it stays incorporated with the distilled water much better. So, oop, not booyah, booyah. Okay. Back to my pocket I go. And yeah, there's a lot of people that haven't have, would tell me that <laughs> um, hmm, your um, mental health. Yeah, we all question that. In any case, moving along. Real quickly here. I do wish to say, uh, send a, a big shout out. And I know there's an awful lot of people that um, think that 
you know, sending positive vibes and praying for people and all that other fun stuff. It's just so much feel good shit. But I'm still sending positive vibes and prayers to the people in Indonesia and those that have been in the path of the tsunamis and had to deal with the earthquakes. Ah, bless your hearts. Mama nature is not a happy critter right now. And she's taking it out on that spot. Wait your turn. She can pick and choose wherever she wishes to. Now, I have another one about Mechahuana. And this is from March of this year. And it's from I fucking love science.com or iflscience.com. It's 23 science backed health benefits of marijuana. Now, states around the country, 29 of them, plus Washington, D.C., have legalized medical marijuana. The American public largely supports the legalization of medical marijuana. At least 84% of the public believes the drug should be legal for medicinal uses. And recreational pot usage is less controversial than ever, with at least 61% of Americans in support. Why not? Why not? Alcohol and all its ugly forms is legal. Let this weed be free. Now, even though some medical benefits of smoking pot may be overstated by advocates of marijuana legislation, recent research has demonstrated that there are legitimate medical uses for marijuana and strong reasons to continue studying the drug's medicinal uses. It is not a drug. It is a plant. It happens to have components in it that, wait for it, your brain can produce. Everything on this planet can produce cannabinoids. So even the NIH's National Institute on Drug Abuse lists medical uses for cannabis. There are at least two active chemicals in marijuana that researchers think have medicinal applications. <clears throat> Excuse me. Those are cannabinoidal or CBD, which seems to impact the brain without a high. And there's tetrahydrocannabinoidal, or THC, which has pain-relieving properties and is largely responsible for the high. But scientists say that limitations on marijuana research means that we still have big questions about its medicinal properties. In addition to CBD and THC, there are another 400 or so chemical compounds, more than 60 of which are cannabinoids. Many of these could have medicine or medical uses, but without more research, we won't know how to best make use of those compounds. More research would set, shed light on the risks of marijuana, which so far, actual ca deaths caused by marijuana have, so far as I know, been zero. Zero. Aspirin kills more people. So, um, now, more research would shed light on the, on the risks of marijuana, and even if there are legitimate uses for medical marijuana, that doesn't mean all use is harmless. Some research indicates that chronic heavy users may have impaired memory, learning, and processing speed, and especially if they started regularly using marijuana before age 16 or 17. Although there was a study done in, um, uh, was it the Dominican Republic or Jamaica? can't remember exactly what country it was done now, of women who smoked ganja or drank ganja tea during pregnancy and while nursing their little ones. And the results that they got from that were not exactly the results they were looking for because these children wound up being more better adjusted than children of parents that did not. Granted, parenting styles makes a difference, but still... That was, that was a report I read years and years ago, and yeah, I need to find that again. I need to do some digging, find that bad boy. Now, for some of the follow or 
For some of the following medical benefits, there is good evidence, and for others, there's reason to continue conducting research. Um, the best supported medicinal use of marijuana is as a treatment for chronic pain. A recent report by the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine said that there was definitive evidence that cannabis or cannabinoids, which are found in the marijuana plant, can be an effective treatment for chronic pain. The report said that um, by far the most common reason people request medical marijuana. There is also strong evidence that medical cannabis can help with muscle spasms. That same report said that there's equally strong evidence marijuana can help with muscle spasms related to multiple sclerosis. Other types of muscle spasms respond to marijuana as well. People use medical marijuana to treat diaphragm spasms that are untreatable by other prescription medications. In other words, you know, you could smoke a little weed and you wouldn't have to take that prescription. Oh, wait a minute, that's cutting into big pharma's profits again because you were growing a plant. Another one, it doesn't seem to harm lung capacity and may even improve it. There's a fair amount of evidence that marijuana does not, ha does not do harm to the lungs unless you also smoke tobacco. One study published in the Journal of American Medical Association found that not only does marijuana not impair lung function, it may even increase lung capacity. Researchers looking for risk factors of heart disease tested the lung function of 5,115 young adults over the course of 20 years. Toba tobacco smokers lost lung function over time but pot users actually showed an increase in lung capacity. That's because of... <laughs> hold it, hold it. Yeah, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> it's possible that the increased lung capacity may be due to, <laughs> wait for it, taking a deep breath while inhaling the drug and not from the therapeutic chemical in the drug. <laughs> Imagine that. Um, the smokers in that study only toked up a few times a month, but a more recent survey of people who smoke pot daily for up to 20 years found no evidence that smoking pot harmed their lungs either. The National Academy's report said that there are good studies showing marijuana users are not more likely to have cancers associated with smoking. Now, moving along, um, it may be of some use in treating glaucoma, or it may be possible to derive a drug from marijuana for this use. One of the most common reasons that uh, states allow medical marijuana is to treat and prevent the eye disease glaucoma, which increases pressure in the eyeball, damaging the optic nerve and causing loss of vision. Marijuana decreases the pressure inside the eye, including, or that's according to the National Eye Institute. Studies in the early 1970s showed that marijuana, when smoked, lowered intraocular pressure in people with normal pressure and those with glaucoma. For now, the medical consensus is that marijuana only lowers IOP or intraocular pressure for a few hours, meaning there's not good evidence for it as a long-term treatment for now. But researchers hope that perhaps a marijuana-based compound could be developed that lasts longer. It may help control epileptic seizures. Some studies have shown that cannabinoidal, or CBD, another major marijuana compound, seems to help people with treatment-resistant epilepsy. A number of individuals have reported that marijuana is the only thing that helps control their or their children's seizures. However, there haven't been many gold standard double-blind studies on the topic, so researchers say more data is needed before we know how effective marijuana is. It also decreases the symptoms of a severe seizure disorder known as 
Dravitz syndrome. Now, during the research for his documentary, Weed, which I have seen that documentary, it was really very interesting, Sanjay Gupta interviewed the Fiji family who treated their five-year-old daughter using a medical marijuana strain high in cannabinoidal and low in THC. The Fiji family's daughter, Charlotte, has Dravet syndrome, which causes seizures and severe developmental delays. According to the film, the drug decreased her seizures from 300 a week to just one every seven days. Forty other children in the state were using the same strain of marijuana to treat their seizures when the film was made, and it seemed to be working. Now, the doctors who recommended this treatment said the cannabinoidal in the plant interacts with brain cells to quiet the excessive activity in the brain that causes these seizures. Gupta notes, however, that a Florida hospital that specializes in the disorder, the American Academy of Pediatrics and the Drug Enforcement Agency, don't endorse marijuana as a treatment for Dravet or other seizure issues. Why? Because they have big pharma stuff that they would much rather push because they're in their pocket. Or maybe big pharma's in their... Uh, somebody's getting some dilly-dallying going on in the pocket. Um, how about this one? A chemical found in marijuana stops cancer from spreading, at least in cell cultures. CBD may help prevent cancer from spreading. Researchers at California Pacific Medical Center in San Francisco reported in 2007. Other very preliminary studies on aggressive brain tumors in mice or cell cultures have shown that THC and CBD can slow or shrink tumors at the right dose, which is a strong reason to do more research and also a strong reason to keep it out of your hands because let me tell you chemotherapy is expensive and the markup is through the roof and the doctors that dispense it make a killing pun intended in 2014 study um, it found that marijuana can significantly slow the growth of the type of brain tumor associated with 80% of malignant brain cancer in people. Still, these findings in cell cultures and animals don't necessarily mean the effect will translate to people. Far more investigation is needed, so let's do some clinical trials with people. If they survive, then I'm thinking that it worked. Because most of the people that have malignant brain cancer don't survive, especially not after they've gone through chemotherapy and radiation. It also may decrease anxiety in low doses. Researchers know that many cannabis users consume marijuana to relax, but also that many people say smoking too much can cause anxiety. So, excuse me, there's a yawn. Scientists conducted a study to find the Goldilocks zone, which is the right amount of marijuana to calm people. With me, one hit, I'm good. <laughs> I'm down for the count, too. But that's a whole other story. Now, according to Emma Childs, who is an associate professor of psychiatry at the University of Illinois at Chicago and an author of the study, we found that THC in low doses reduced stress while higher doses had the opposite effect. How high was that higher dose, hon? A few puffs was enough to help study participants relax, but a few pumps more started to amp up anxiety. However, pe people may react differently in different situations. Another one, THC may slow the progression of Alzheimer's disease. It may be, marijuana may be able to slow the progression of Alzheimer's disease. This is from a study led by Kim Jonda at the Scripps Research Institute. A 2006 study published in the journal Molecular Pharmaceuticals found that THC, the active chemical in marijuana, or the, at least the psychoactive one, the one that gives you the high, slows the formation of amyloid plaques by blocking the enzyme in the brain that makes them. 
These plaques kill brain cells and are associated with Alzheimer's. They are associated, they are linked with, they are not the cause of. They don't know the cause of, or at least they're not saying they do. Once again, they're practicing medicine. Got to throw that in there too. Now, a synthetic mixture of CBD and THC seems to preserve memory in a mouse model of Alzheimer's disease. A synthetic seems to. Another study suggested that the THC-based prescription drug called dronabinol was able to reduce behavioral, behavioral disturbances in dementia patients. Now, all these studies are in very early stages, though, so more research is needed. In other words, sign up to be a guinea pig. We are all taking our turn at being Dr. Frankenstein. The drug eases the pain of multiple sclerosis. There you go. This is according to a study published in the Canadian Medical Association Journal. Jody Corey Bloom studied 30 multiple sclerosis patients with painful counteractions in their muscles. Or, not counteractions, contractions, excuse me. And these patients didn't respond to other treatments. But after smoking marijuana for a few days, they reported that they were in less pain. The THC in marijuana seems to bind to receptors in the nerves and muscles to relieve the pain, possibly even decreases the inflammation, which is a lot of times the cause of pain. I'm just throwing that little bit in there myself. Um, another thing is it seems to lessen side effects from treating hepatitis C and increase treatment effectiveness. The treatment for hep C infection is harsh. Negative side effects include fatigue, nausea, muscle aches, loss of appetite, and depression. Those side effects can last for months and lead to many people to stop their treatment course early. But a 2006 study in the European Journal of Gastroenterology and Hepatology found that 86% of patients using marijuana successfully completed their hep C therapy. Only 29% of non-smokers completed their treatment, possibly because the marijuana helps lessen the treatment's side effects. Marijuana also seems to improve the treatment's effectiveness. 54% of hep C patients smoking marijuana got their viral levels low and kept them low in comparison to only 8% of non-smokers. Marijuana may help with inflammatory bowel disease. Ooh, that cranky bowel. I hate having cranky bowels. Patients with inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis could benefit from marijuana use. The University of Nottingham researchers found in 2010 that chemicals in marijuana, including THC and cannabinoidal, interact with cells in the body that play an important role in gut, gut function and immune responses. The study was published in the Journal of Pharmacology and Experimental Therapeutics. The body makes THC-like compounds that increase the permeability of the intestines, allowing bacteria in. But the cannabinoids in marijuana block these compounds, making the intestinal cells bond together tighter and become less permeable. But the National Academy's report said that there isn't enough evidence to be sure whether mar marijuana really helps with these conditions, so more research is needed. Once again, follow the cha-ching, let's go the pharmaceutical route. That's where they're leading. It relieves arthritis discomfort. I happen to know some people that that's the only reason they do it. Marijuana alleviates pain, reduces inflammation, and promotes sleep, which may help relieve pain and discomfort for people with rheumatoid arthritis. That was announced in 2011. The researchers from rheumatology units at several hospitals gave their patients Sativix, which is a cannabinoid-based pain-relieving medicine. After a two-week period, people on this had a significant reduction in pain and improved sleep quality compared to placebo users. 
Other studies have found that plant-derived cannabinoids, excuse me, and inhaled marijuana can decrease arthritis pain, and this is according to the National Academy's report. Marijuana users tend to be less obese and have a better response to eating sugar. Yeah, I very rarely got the munchies for sweet stuff. It was always Doritos or Cheetos or <laughs> something salty. Now, a study published in the American Journal of Medicine suggests that pot smokers are skinnier than the average person and have healthier metabolism and reaction to sugars, even though they end up eating more calories. Huh. Interesting. The study analyzed data from more than 4,500 adult Americans, 579 of whom were current marijuana smokers, meaning that they had smoked in the last month. About 2,000 people had used marijuana in the past, while another 2,000 had never used the drug. The researchers studied how the participants' bodies responded to eating sugars, and they measured blood sugar levels and the hormone insulin after participants had eaten in nine hours, and after they'd eaten sugar. Not only were pot users thinner, their bodies also had a healthier response to sugar. Now, of course, the study couldn't determine whether the marijuana users were like this to begin with, or if these characteristics were somehow related to their smoking. So while not really a health or medical benefit, marijuana could spur creativity. You know, lots of people get like acne light bulb moments. Dude, seriously, you know, it's like, you know, those kind of things. Contrary to stoner stereotypes, marijuana usage has actually been shown to have some positive mental effects, particularly in terms of increasing creativity, at least in some contexts. Not quite like hold my beer, watch this, but dude, seriously, kick back, watch this dude, hold his beer. <laughs> so even though people's short-term memories tend to function worse when they're high, they actually get better at tests requiring them to come up with new ideas. Well, now researchers have also found that some study participants improve their verbal fluency, their ability to come up with different words while using marijuana. Part of this increased creative, creative ability may come from the release of dopamine in the brain which lowers inhibitions and allows people to feel more relaxed, giving the brain the ability to perceive things differently. Cannabis also soothes the tremors for people with Parkinson's disease. Um, research from Israel shows that smoking marijuana significantly reduces pain and tremors and improves sleep for Parkinson's disease patients. Particularly impressive was the improved fine motor skills among patients. Medical marijuana is legal in Israel for multiple conditions and a lot of research into the medical uses of cannabis is done there and supported by the Israeli government. Marijuana helps veterans, well it says may help veterans suffering from PTSD, but yeah, I know some that they swear by it. In 2014, the Colorado Department of Public Health awarded $2 million to Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, one of the biggest proponents of marijuana research, to study marijuana's potential for people with post-traumatic stress disorder. Naturally occurring cannabinoids, similar to THC, help regulate the system that causes fear and anxiety in the body and brain. Marijuana is approved to treat PTSD in most in, or in some states already. In New Mexico, PTSD is the number one reason for people to get a license for medical marijuana. But there are still questions about the safety of using marijuana while suffering from PTSD, which this study, which has taken a while to get off the ground, will hopefully help answer. Yes. 
<laughs> yeah, Moosey, kind of, sort of, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Animal studies suggest that marijuana may protect the brain after a stroke. Hmm. I wonder if that's why cows, when they get in there, it's like, moo. <laughs> You know, cows like munching on it, too. Research from the University of Nottingham shows that marijuana may help protect the brain from damage from a stroke by reducing the size of the area affected by the stroke, at least in rats, mice, and monkeys. Wait a minute. Rats, mice, and monkeys get to get stoned, but we don't? Goddamn, human trials. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't know, what I'm, don't know that I want to be a lab rat. Don't want to play Dr. Frankenstein where you get to be the doctor and I get to, no. Now, this isn't the only research that has shown neuroprotective effects of cannabis. Some research shows that the plant may help protect the brain after other types of brain trauma. Marijuana might even protect the brain from concussions and trauma. Lester Grinspoon, that's a cool name, Grinspoon. <laughs> is a professor, professor of psychiatry at Harvard and marijuana advocate. Recently wrote a letter to the NFL commissioner, Roger Goodell. And in it, he said the NFL should stop testing players for marijuana and that the league should start funding research into the plant's ability to protect the brain instead. Besides the fact that you're not going to have as many front linemen, you know, going up there to rip the quarterback's head off and shit down his neck. Because they'll all be like, dude, <laughs> he's got the ball. Monkey ball. So you, I could see that happening. Already, many doctors and researchers believe that marijuana has incredibly powerful neuroprotective properties, an understanding based on both laboratory and clinical data. Now, Goodell said that consider, uh, he'd consider permitting athletes to use marijuana if medical research shows that it's effective neuroprotective agent. Oh, there's that great big two-letter word, if at least one a recent study on the topic found that patients who had used marijuana were less likely to die from traumatic brain injuries. Oh, well, that's cool. Um, want to know how they gathered that data, but still, interesting. It can help eliminate nightmares. Well, that's because you're just totally zoned, dude. Uh, this one is a complicated one because it involves effects that can be both positive and negative. Marijuana disturbs sleep cycles by interrupting the later stages of REM sleep. In the long run, or a little, 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 in the long run, this could be a problem for frequent users. However, for people suffering from serious nightmares like night tremors, oi especially those associated with PTSD, this can be helpful, perhaps in the short term. Um, <laughs> nightmares and other dreams occur during the, those same stages of sleep. By interrupting REM sleep, many of those dreams may not occur. And research into using a synthetic cannabinoid, I know I don't like that one, Similar to THC, but not the same. It's the same thing, only different. Yeah. They showed a significant decrease in the number of nightmares in patients with PTSD. Additionally, even if frequent use can be bad for sleep, marijuana may be a better sleep aid than some other substances that people use. Some of those include medication and alcohol and may potentially have worse effects on sleep, though some research is needed on the topic. Yes. Am I being stereotyped? <laughs> uh, I know, Moosey. Mm. No, people, no. You know, there's, there's very, very few... Um, potheads that I know, potheads, yeah, uh, that are idiots. Now, I do know a few, but, you know, they were idiots before they found pot. 
those that I knew that long. Uh, and once they found it kind of accentuated. So, you know, whatever you are, it makes you more of, I think, in at least in some, okay, I'm just slathering that on. <laughs> Moving along, cannabis reduces some of the pain and nausea from chemotherapy and stimulates appetite. That I also know. I know someone that used cannabis while he was going because he had a brain tumor. And he was doing through going through chemo and radiation and he smoked pot so that he could actually eat something. Pissed his wife off because she went, oh my God, he's smoking pot. That's bad stuff. Until I started showing her some links and she went, really? Wow. Really? Yes, hon. Now, one of the most well-known medical uses of marijuana is for people going through chemotherapy. There's good evidence that it's effective for this, according to the National Academies report. Cancer patients being treated with chemo suffer from painful nausea, vomiting, and loss of appetite. And this can cause additional health complications, along with, you know, your whole immune system being tanked, basically. So marijuana can help reduce these side effects, alleviating pain, decreasing nausea, and stimulating the appetite, making it a much more pleasant experience to go through this killing of your immune system thing because by golly you have a spot right there so we're gonna slather the whole thing kill it all because of that one little spot right there there's also multiple fda approved cannabinoid drugs that use thc which is the main active chemical in marijuana for the same purpose and they have peanut butter cookies with a reese's peanut butter cup right in the middle there's that now I'm hungry. <laughs> I do like peanut butter cookies. And man, you put a Reese's peanut butter cup on top. Oh, damn. I would be able to eat one and then say, okay, I'm done for a while because it's entirely too rich. But oh, man, would it be good. Uh, back to the article. Marijuana can help people who are trying to cut back on drinking because it's safer than alcohol. That's not to say it's risk-free, but cannabis is much less addictive than alcohol and doesn't cause nearly as much physical damage. Disorders like alcoholism involve disruptions in the endocannabinoidal system, and because of that, some people think cannabis might help patients struggling with these disorders. Now, research published in the Harm Reduction Journal found that some people use marijuana as a less harmful substitute for alcohol or prescription drugs or other illegal drugs. And some of the most common reasons patients make that uh, substitution are that marijuana has less negative side effects and is less likely to cause withdrawal problems. Yeah, and it's cheaper too. Now, some people do become psychologically dependent on marijuana, and it is not a cure for substance abuse problems, because actually a substance abuse problem is something to do, it's a personality thing. It is not like they tell you you've got a disease, you have a dis-ease. You have something going on that makes you cling to, latch on to, and that's something that needs to be addressed. Now, um, it goes on to say, from, uh, but from a harmful reduction standpoint, marijuana can help. Still, it's worth noting that combining marijuana and alcohol can be dangerous because then when, there's, when you, you know, go driving under the influence, it doesn't make shit but a difference that you, um, your blood alcohol level was 1.0 if you also show positive for like marijuana or you, it smells like pot, they'll say a marijuana related death. So that's the only way they get them. Kind of like Kratom. A Kratom related death. Okay. They had opioids and alcohol in their system and Kratom. But it's a Kratom related death. I've read articles like that. Um, okay. Dun, 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 dun. Now, medical marijuana legislation 
seems to reduce opioid overdose deaths as well. So while there are a number of factors behind the current opioid epidemic, many experts agree that the use of opioid painkillers to treat chronic pain has played a major role. And it's very risky to take powerful drugs that have a, a high risk of causing overdose and high addiction rates. Marijuana, which can also treat chronic pain, is far less risky. Several studies have shown that states that allow medical marijuana have fewer opioid deaths. And this effect seems to grow over time, with states who pass these laws seeing a 20% lower rate of opioid deaths in the law's first year, 24% in the third, and 33% in the sixth. That's according to Stat News. So it's hard to say that deaths went down because of medical marijuana legislation and not other reasons, but because the effects seem to get stronger the longer marijuana remains legal, researchers think marijuana is likely cause of the decline in opioid deaths. So, wow, I'm just about out of time, and I haven't gotten to the pig yet. That was really, I found that very fascinating, very fascinating. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. Point one. What is it? Point oh eight. What's the legal alcohol? I've never, I've never been the legal limit on alcohol, you know, to be drunk like thing. So I have no idea what the, <laughs> what the numbers are. Thanks, Grim, for calling me out on that. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go check out the pig real quick before I run out of time because i got to see what happened this date in history over on PIGazette.com. So, for, oh, let's see. Oh, word of the day, Kavanaugh. When all else fails, you stoop to character assassination using bogus sexual assault charges. Presumed guilty. Yeah, that's the alternate term. This date in history. Yes, I see my name getting flasher. Yes, Goober, there are some scuzz bags that need to be arrested. Yes. Okay, this date in history, the 28th of September, 1704. Maryland Colony road tests its own brand of a quickie divorce when it pops out a statute taking or giving toll takers or ministers the right to impose divorce on unholy couples. <laughs> Oh, all kinds of couples just popped into my mind on that one. Unholy couples. I'm thinking the Clintons, the Obamas. That's just right off the bat. Um, the Bushes. Uh, wow, there's a lot of unholy couples, at least in my perspective. Moving along. Uh, this date in history, the 28th of September, 1904. After a big apple woman is busted for smoking a coffin nail in a car on Fifth Avenue, Michael Bloomberg smirks, muttering, that gives me an idea. Yeah, wouldn't surprise me. And finally, this date in history, the 28th of September, 1940. Fan named Bud Brennan leaves stands, tries to tackle Tom Harmon on the three-yard line. Really? Wow. Okay. That's pretty much what they had for this date in history over here on PIGazette.com. Y'all have been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com channel 10. Also on all kinds of other RLM channels throughout the interwebs. Thank you all for listening in on this Freaker Friday. I will be back next week Wednesday for the Wackadoodle Wednesday edition of the Rocket Chair. Be sure to either stay tuned or check back in a couple hours, two hours to be precise, for Grimmy and Moose Girl as they kick off the Freaker's Ball for this Freaker Friday night tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Flasher and Vinny will have the dork table here on reallibertymedia.com. Also, Sunday at noon Eastern Time, Grimmy's going to be cranking out the blues. And there's going to be a rousing game of trivia going on in the RLM chat. For those of you who are interested, directly following him will be Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop-ass on yo-ass behind the woodshed. Always very informative, good old Hal is. Thank you ever so much, you guys, for doing that. Um, let's see. 
Do I have time for one more thing here? I have a couple minutes. Uh, in the quotable quotes section, appearing on Fox News Channel, Hannity, former U.S. Attorney Joe De, De, De Genova, first condemned Senate Judiciary Committee member Dianne Feinstein for waging a smear campaign against Kavanaugh, after which he responded to Hirono, I think that Senator Feinstein has set in motion one of the greatest tragedies in American history. She has purposely tried to ruin a good man, but more than that, she has tried to ruin his wife and two daughters. This is a disgraceful performance by the Democratic Party. And let me say this to Maisie Hirono, the Hawaiian senator Democrat who told all the men of America, shut up. Tonight I say to her, shut up, Senator, shut up. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of Dianne Feinstein. I'm sick of Senator Blumenthal and of all the Democrats who have one thing in mind. They want power. They thirst for power. And they don't care who they ruin in the process, including Dr. Christine Ford. I threw that in, that last little bit. So, once again, thank you all for listening in on this Freaker Friday. I hope you have an absolutely amazing rest of your day, and I hope you have an awesome weekend as well. I'm going to be kind of in and out. i got things to do, people to see, all that fun shit. So, I guess, until then, till I see you in the funny papers, please remember, I truly do love you all. And I wish you all enough. Good night.